So mistake number two, I think we killed that one to death. Um, failing to protect the intellectual property. And I know a lot of people are like, what? Like, how could you fail to protect your intellectual property? That's the most important thing in your whole startup. It's all about the IP. You'd be surprised. So we've got what, we, what I call the moonlighting problem. Then there's the Zuckerberg issue. There's missing and disappearing founders, failing to sign documents, and holding back on your IP. So what are all of these? So everybody does moonlighting. We all know the story. Guy toiling away in his garage at night after work, you know, working on his idea, working on his idea, then he forms his company and goes public and he's in an incredible success. Everybody does this. And even on the California Labor Code, it recognizes this. And it says that any provision in an employee agreement shall not apply to an invention that an employee developed entirely on his own time without using the employer's equipment. So again, you're in your garage at night working on your own personal idea. Your employer can't grab it. Your employer can't claim it. The problem is, what if that idea is close to or related to the space that your employer is in? So you've got, does it relate? at the time of conception to the business of the employer? Or does it result from any work that you performed for your employer? So you've gotta be really, really careful if you're moonlighting. I tell my clients, don't even use a pencil from the workplace. If they wanna call me about something, I'm like, call me at night, don't call me from your office phone. If you have a cell phone but your company issued it to you, Get a personal cell phone. Call me on your break. Don't use your office email. Don't use that account. Get a Yahoo account. Don't use any resources from your employer. Don't use your laptop that you use at work. Set up totally independent and complete resources to work on your startup. Because what happens is, you know, there's the contamination issue, which is one thing, which is IP from your employer creeps into the IP for your startup. Now you've got a problem, your employer might try and claim it. So carefully review any agreements that you have with your employer. Make sure you don't use any of the resources of your employer so that your employer can't later come and try and claim portions of your IP. That's one of the ways that you can fail to protect your IP. Another thing is, and there was a movie about this, a big lawsuit, is people who fail to assign their IP over to the corporation. So how does this happen? Startups, you're very fluid. You're running around. You're operating at a breakneck pace. Pre-incorporation, you're out there creating IP. You've got people consulting with you, various different founders and all. And then it comes time to incorporate. But when you incorporate, what you want to do is make sure that all that IP that you've been developing for the past couple of years gets assigned to the corporation. It's generally pretty easy with the founders because they're gonna get stock in the company and what we usually do is we wrap that all up. Here's your stock, you assign the technology to the company as payment for the stock, that's how it works. But be careful about developers that you might have worked with, people who helped you out. Maybe you were four founders, now you're three because you voted somebody off the island, you didn't like them. Well, you better believe that when you become really successful, that guy is going to come out of the woodwork, and all of a sudden, the IP that he developed is the linchpin of your entire organization, and he's suing you. So you want to go out and find all of those people or track them down, get them to assign their IP over to the corporation, because it'll be a lot easier to do in the beginning stages than it is later when you're looking at a big acquisition or trying to go public, and they're seeing dollar signs and they've got leverage over you at that point. In the beginning stages, you know, for most people, it's like, you know, what is it, nine out of 10 startups fail, or you know, what are the statistics? They're like, yeah, yeah, whatever. But it's like, oh, you're doing a financing, and your investors want me to assign my IP. Oh. I mean, the guy's probably like thinking, I didn't even do anything, but maybe I want some money for that. Or you're going public, or you know, something else. Um, and this was one of the issues that Zuckerberg had, not, well, it wasn't his issue, but it was a Winklevoss twins issue where they didn't get him to assign the IP that he was working on over to them. So he split off on his own and they came back later and said, hey, wait a minute, what's going on? That's what was our idea. Like, 
I don't see anything in writing for that, and what I'm doing is a little different. So make sure that you get that IP assigned over to the company. And what will happen a lot of times is I'll have clients who don't sign this stuff, and they're constantly like, God, Catherine, leave us alone. We'll sign it. You know, I'm like, sign it now. Just get it signed. Get it signed. Get it to me. We'll file it away. You don't have to think about it anymore. Yes? Pre-incorporation, yeah, because there's nowhere to assign it to, right? You've got to have an understanding or agreement with them, and they can assign things to you as a person. But generally, you know, what happens is you're a startup and you're working on a ton of different ideas, and then you're finally ready to launch, and you form your corporation. That's when you get everything assigned. But keep track of who those people are. If you're working with developers, do enter into an agreement with the developer, and it can be just between you and the developer. You know, your other co-founders co-founder, might be like, well, yeah, he's entering into it with him. What if he goes off by himself? But that's an issue for you and your co-founders. What do you mean, like, what would that policy in our agreement state for the first one? It could be an IP assignment agreement. Um, generally, what, what we do, like for co-founders, is you have a stock purchase agreement, and then you attach an assignment of technology to that. If you work with consultants, or developers, you enter into a consulting or development agreement, and part of that agreement is an agreement to assign all of the technology over to the company. And then post-incorporation, you've got to make sure that everybody that's creating IP for you signs an agreement in which they're assigning their IP over to the company. Yes? Can you explain the Mark Zuckerberg case? I don't know the details of the case. I haven't looked at it other than the movie and hearing about what's going on, mm -hmm. you know, anecdotally. But essentially, you know, the Winklevoss twins hired him or were working with him on an idea that they had. And they had a parting of the ways, and he created his own idea that sort of sprung from that and created Facebook. And, the, you know, these things never become problems until you're successful. He became successful, and they were like, our idea, that was us. But they didn't have an IP assignment. Mark Zuckerberg never assigned or agreed to assign that IP over to them or their corporation. So it's creating free corporation? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. Is that why some companies usually will give you a computer and so forth? They'll assign you a computer when you're working for them so they don't have to worry about that? It's not really the reason. I mean, they'll make you sign an agreement. Like, if you're working for Cisco, they'll make you sign an agreement where you're going to sign all of the IP that you're creating over to them. Okay. Um, yes? About this IP agreement you told us about when you split with partners mm -hmm. and like that, it can be an a NDA document that mm -hmm. says about IP? Or it can be. IP yeah. It can yeah. be an NDA that contains... It can be part of an NDA, yeah. Okay. It's just a provision in an agreement. So there's a lot, can be a lot of other provisions in that agreement, and part of it is an IP assignment. All right, thank you. Mark Zuckerberg signed that. How did Had he signed one, there might not have ever been a Facebook. You know, I don't, and I don't know the, all of the facts of the case. I just know that the core issue was he'd never agreed to assign his IP, that the stuff that he was creating and working on, over to them. Possibly not. They hired him to build something else and yeah. on his computer. And they yeah. came up with the idea for Facebook because his computer IP wasn't signed over to their company. Yeah. He. But you'd be surprised at how many people aren't careful with this. I'm always amazed. Like, I'll sit down with clients. And, and we'll be talking about, we're going to set up a corporation, we need to assign all the IP over to the corporation, and da 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 and who are the founders, and who's created IP for you. Well, there was that guy two years ago. We had a couple meetings with him. We think he went to Fiji. We don't know where he is. But yeah, he did contribute some ideas to us. But he's not important. It really doesn't matter. So you know what? It doesn't matter until you're successful. And then 
he's going to be this guy in, F in Fiji or wherever he is, is going to be like, hey, I created the best IP. Like, all that company is based on my idea. All me. I want, give me my portion of the pie. So that's when it becomes a real issue. So your best chance of resolving that is resolve it in the beginning stages. Don't let it wait. Don't, you know, I, I call it an asterisk problem. You've always got a little asterisk next to your IP because there's that guy out there who never is signed over. Is he going to come out of the woodwork or not? Is he, you know, does somebody else out there have a claim? Yes? So what about the people that come out of the woodwork that, like, are lying about contributing and like, Then you get into a court case but and you're... Evidence. It depends on what evidence and what sort of proof they're able to put up, put forth. Like, no matter how minimal the contribution was, but what if it's just like advice that never got reported or anything? Uh huh. Even, you know, I mean, you get into the, the old he said, she said, how strong a case do they have? What sort of evidence do they have? Do they have anything at all? The thing is, it's going to be a lot easier for you to reach out to those people when your startup is a little baby than it is when you've got some traction, when you might be looking at an acquisition, because then there's real money on the line. If it's just the beginning stages and you're just, hey, you know, look, hey, we're setting up our corporation, we understand, you know, we met a couple of times, you can downplay, we met a couple of times, you gave us a couple idea of ideas, we didn't really incorporate any of that, but hey, we, we value you as a person, we want to give you some shares. Take some shares and assign that over to us and all good, everything's great, let's have coffee sometime. That's a lot easier than, oh gosh, we're going to be acquired by Apple or Google and they've just discovered that there might be this possibility of this guy out there who might have a claim on our IP and they want us to resolve that issue. How are we going to resolve that issue? We don't think it's an issue. We don't think it's anything at all. We don't think he has any claims. We don't think he has any evidence. But it, you know, whereas before it might have cost us 1,000 shares or 2,000 shares, now it might cost us significantly more than that. And a lot of time, effort, angst, anxiety. You never want to have what I, that little asterisk next to your IP. I had a client that they had one of the guys who literally did disappear to Fiji. And every time we did a financing on the IP section, we had to have a disclosure about this guy. And it was a page long. He, we met, we did this, we did that, we don't think he had any, da 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 da, we can't find him. And most of the investors were like, yeah, 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 whatever. And this company did have an acquisition, but it wasn't a big, huge public splash, so it never became an issue. But it was always out there. There was always that little, like, oh, out there that you've got to cover. And it could be so easily dealt with in the beginning stages. So easily dealt with. I mean, it's not going to stop them from later saying, well, you only gave me a thousand shares and gosh, your whole company is based on my IP because it was so valuable. But at least then you've got that document saying, hey, you assign that over to us. You know, end of story. And then this is one of, ooh, we're going to just speed up. Don't hold back your IP. This is what I call hedging your bets. I'm going to license my IP over to the corporation. Or I want an agreement that if my startup goes under, I get my IP back. Investors will not like that. They want 100% of your energy devoted to that corporation. If you're hedging your bets by licensing the IP or getting a holdback provision in there, they're wondering about your commitment to your startup. Just don't do it. And Think about the longevity of IP these days. How long of a shelf life does it have? Is it really going to be valuable in two to three years if your startup goes up in flames? Probably not. Is it really worth it to go to this time and expense and have investors question your dedication to your startup to get this IP back? In a lot of instances, if your IP, if, sorry, if your startup is going under, you can generally negotiate with the corporation and buy that IP back, you know, for minimal fee. But don't give your investors any reason to question your dedication. Is it because all the rest of their stuff is on it usually? Like all the rest of their personal stuff, so they really don't want to like, is that why? Symptom and people get very attached. It's, I cr this is my creation. 
I don't want to, I can't give it up. It's my creation. There's no way to like transfer those files to another IP and then just sell that IP off. You get what I'm saying? Like all the Photoshop files, well, files. Well, generally you want every single bit of intellectual property, all the code, trademarks, patents, inventions, everything to be assigned over to the corporation. Okay. And your investors want the whole bundle. They want the whole bundle because you, know, you might go out to them with you know, idea A, which then segues into idea B. You know, or you might go out to them, well, we have idea A and B, C, D, and your investor's like, D, that's the one. That's the one that's going to work. So they want it all. I mean, th they're giving you $5 million to play with. They want it all. Give it to them all. Don't hold anything back.